then um maybe footer you put your footer things like okay when you go to the downside of the website you see copyright or you see sometimes you go to your website to see um links and uh, hey you put it there maybe if you uh, also put in your site you say section and uh, hey you put this section is talking about something you put aside you say okay this um side i want aside this as far all the elements are going to be at the side of the document and hey that way your code is having structure if you sleep and wake up when they wipe your memory you can come back i'm like okay well, this thing is like this and like and helping your code to have more helping you to actually understand what you're even doing so you can help to structure your code more and helping your code to have more dimension not just scatter scatter and if you are styling it you can style that particular section of your this thing. like if you put everything you want in one you can style it so that all this your header part now can be in one side your this thing can be in one side you get you can style it as a group you get so it's very useful to html but it's not like if you don't do it you have no code in html no but it's just like it's something you should try to adopt you get in the long run that's why i am i put it to be today as per our last day of working with HTML. So I said, okay, we'll touch semantic elements in HTML. So if you guys can see, you see that um, they listed some of the semantic and you see this diagram. That's why I love this website. It's kind of user friendly. So beginner friendly. So even if you don't really understand something, you can use it too. But as I, as I always say, in theory is not the only thing. Even if we practice now for 10 hours now, like, and we sit down here and be practicing, and me and you are practicing, it's not, it's not enough. It seems to go and practice on your own. Because there are some things I will not discover. There are some things that you will discover more when you try it out. So, like now, as we can see now, they gave us examples of semantic elements and I told the semantic elements are things that when you read the name of the elements or the name of the tag you automatically know what's talking about. Now header you are saying that let's say let's use this W3 schools now as a point of contact like this. You see this area now where you see W3 schools logo and maybe this part like this this header part is a header. This W3 schools like this like this like this uh -huh. this white side with this sign up and login button, this is a header. So in this case, now you put all these elements in the header, and then maybe you styled it that it should go up, it should, it should not come down, something like that. Then the nav, a nav bar is usually a place where people can go and click, like easy links. They can find links. Like you go to many websites, you see something like home, contacts, about us, um maybe cards if it's uh, something like something like that place where you see quick links where you can be able to just easily navigate that's why you call it nav navigate so like if you want to go to html and tutorial you click and you are seeing that they styled it that it's showing that you're already on html tutorial then if you want to go to css you can easily click so this is something like easy distance so it's good that you put it and then you style it so section now, if you have something that maybe you are, you go to some website now, you see maybe there's something at the side, even like here, here now, and here, there's something at the side, just at the side is at the left side, all this one is at the right, there's something at the side, and then there's the main body, and the main body can now consist of maybe section, article, like that, like that, like you can divide into the different sections, if you're writing a blog post, you can have different like parts, you understand what I'm saying, and then the footer is just this down part where it's be like copyright, let me show you, like for example now, the footer now, uh -huh, is this side, you see that sometimes you go to some website, you see a bunch of links, maybe quick links again, this is still part of the footer, this side is still part of the footer, and then you see all this copyrights then w3 school any additional information they want to put like that like that so this is usually the footer so it's good that you tell html you tell html the like what's the parts of your this thing is talking about and even when you are styling it so you even understand what you are styling you know the one that you're not even grouping it you now come and play it one by one if you get what i'm saying so it's very important that we kind of adopt semantic html even if it's not immediately but in the long run, as we continue, like as we continue what we are doing, as we continue practicing HTML, at a point when you feel comfortable with working with the elements, try to adapt some things. You must not adapt this whole list. Where is the list? 
You must not adapt the whole list that like, okay, well, you make sure you put article, you make sure you put header, you make sure you put nav, you make sure you put footer, you make sure you put main, you make sure no, just even if it's a few things to kind of give your code structure. If someone is coming like and looking at your code, you will understand it. A way you know that you're actually um using good code practices that if someone that is did not code that if you come and look at your code, you'll be able to kind of understand. The, what you are even doing, you get you understand. Okay, this is the kind of thing this person is trying to do. They will be able to at least edit someone that is a programmer, another programmer that not this, which will be able to come and understand your code. But if someone that is programmer come and does not even understand your code, they have to look at it critically. That means you do not even structure that code well, and it also help. Like it also help you to be able to. It also help you to be able to like grow in this thing now like helping to optimize your code so if there are some unnecessary spaces or anything here or will use these semantic elements to optimize your code anyways we've talked much let's go into some of them like we can look at section now section as the name implies can you guys still hear me Are you guys there? Yes, we can see. Okay, you guys are hearing me. I think someone raised their hand. Like, um, is there any question? Let me know if something I can answer now. Let's just say your question, please. Is it Kingsley or me? Okay, our magic person is not available right now. Let's just continue. So, we're entering this section. I'm just going to touch some few ones. So, basically, the beauty of semantic elements is that when you see the listing, you understand what it's talking about. But I've kind of explained the importance of it. So the sexual element is just defining a section in a document. So it can be a group of contents. Get it can be like if you are writing a blog or something, you say, okay, this is one section, is another section, and maybe you want it to have different, like you want it to be grouped different, maybe to have different styling or different functionality. So you just put them in one section. So a web page could normally be split into sections for introduction, content, and contact information. Like you can have an introduction side, you can have the main content, you can have so just section like what you understand from section. That is how it is. So in this case now, you see an example where they had two sections in the document. They put a H1 and P element for different ones. So I'm not the one that's going to come and tell you, okay, this is how. You must use it or do that. You just know, like, okay, if you a, a tax that we can even do is that you you can all in your private time, like, okay, do a normal HTML site. You have done it, and then try to use semantic elements. So if you see that maybe there's one side that is separated from others, you can put it in a section tag. Thereby, if you want to style it or anything, you guys to go into CSS immediately after this. Um, Class, the next um, class you guys will be having, you will start CSS. So you will now see the beauty of putting things in semantic elements so that you can be able to easily style it or, you know, like separate it and group it well. So we have seen that. Then article elements specify independent self contained elements. An article should make sense on its own and it should be possible to distribute it independently from the rest, rest of the website. Um, f examples of where the article elements can be used is forum posts, blog posts, user comments, product cards, like that, like where you just um, put it and it has some things on it. So it's kind of like section, so but, like it should make some sense on its own and everything. So the reason why this thing, HTML has some, it's just like, let me give you a real life example now like maybe i have some terminologies and once you use those terminologies yeah I'm, i have some like 
some benefits attached to using those terminologies. So maybe if you use article, there's a way I'll say, okay, well, this person, this person writing needs to be independent, it needs to be in one place. And then I'll put it like in that way. So if you are styling, you might not do too much because you have kind of used that article umbrella to classify it. So HTML understands that this thing you are putting out in this article is special. You get something like that. Or like you just putting it in a div or something. So, here we can see three articles with self-contained in this sense. So, yeah, that's how it is. And then here we can see how they use CSS to style it. But this is what you guys will do next class. You guys will start talking about styling. They're talking about nesting article in section. So they're just basically saying here that um, you can nest a section in an article. What's nesting? Nesting is like putting another HTML element in, another HTML element. Get what I'm saying? So you can put section in article, or you can put article in section, just depending on what you want. The header element. This is a very important one because it's not, don't confuse it with your, your head. Like, okay, in the HTML document, you see the head and the body. The head is a different place. All these semantic elements are inside the body. Don't confuse header with head. Because the head part is where you see all your, maybe your title, like the title of the document. Like here now, you see the title of the document. You put your also, you also put your inline CSS if you are styling with CSS and all those things. So that's the head side. But your header is inside it is inside the body. So this is another type of semantic HTML. Let's look at let's try it yourself, Sharp, and see. So here inside the body, and another type of semantic element. As you can see, this document does not even have a header, but let's imagine that it had a, a head. It should be something like this now. Um it would be something like this. The head would be here. Then maybe you see something like title and other meta tags. We'll still talk about meta tags. They see something like title. Let me put it so that you guys imagine it well, sure. Title. Maybe you put um, example documents. If you're here from the beginning, or even if you have the tiniest knowledge of the scene, you understand the HTML structure that in a HTML document there's the head and there's the body. So this head part is basically where you put your the title of your document and that title will appear here. And then you also put your meta tags, all those things. We'll still talk about that one. But the body of the um, the body part of HTML is basically where the content appears, like all these contents. So in this case now, they have an article tag and they put a header inside. So this header is like basically as the name implies the header part of what that section you are trying to do maybe like now as you can see the um, example how they did it now this is the heading and this is the body of this particular article section so this header part is useful to say okay well, html this is i want to write now with the header so it's kind of going to have some you know, uniqueness. It's not going to be the same way the body will be. So HTML will take notes to that. So that's like how you can imagine it to get. So I just wanted to clarify that header is not the same thing with head in the title. So head in the title is different. So a head in um, HTML is different. It contains titles, meta tags, um, inline, sorry, internal CSS, all those your links and everything. But this header is a semantic element that we put in the body. So that's why we should take notes for you guys confuse it. Now, footer is basically the same. I, I think I'm going to show you guys an example of footer. This is where you put all your links or your copyrights. If you want to put maybe quick links for people to find. I'm sure we have visited a website where you go down, you see like a bunch of links, copyright, all those things. Any, any additional information you want to put in footer, you put it there. So it just basically defines oh it defines a footer for a document per section. So it's just for you to 
so for html to now okay this is now i want to write as a footer so it would take note of that so yeah um now another major one now that i think we'll talk about if you talk about nav and a side i think any other one should be minor nav as i said earlier is the nav bar is usually like where people put quick links like okay you want to navigate it's helping your user navigate where you see home about us contact us um that kind of thing where you see all those kind of links so you can see now like the major links yeah because here they say not all links should be in the nav elements obviously but the major links that you want your user to be able to find like those are the most important links you want your user to go to any other link can just be linked anywhere within the HTML document but like the most important ones that they have to go to like now we can see um now we can see um this navbar contains html css javascript they're saying that w3 schools wants us to be able to easily assess this link so they put it in the navbar so the nav, if you put something in the nav, you just tell HTML that okay, well, it's a nav bar and it's going to be helpful when you are styling, and it's going to help you to tell HTML so that it's able to position it well for you. So it's majorly links, or if you want to put something that maybe you want the user to really see, I don't know, but it's majorly links like the important links that you put in the nav bar. We can see this example. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Here, can see that they didn't really style it, but you will see like that they put links. They put a bunch of links, and then the links are not even going down, down, down. Like as they put the links, it just came together like as a nav get. So it's trying kind of telling HTML that this thing I'm putting now is like a nav, so you should be able to, you know. Uh -huh. So this you know, would play its part in structuring it as a nav bar. And then when you style your CSS, you can now really do it well. If you want it to have more spacing, if you want them to be buttons, if you want them to have a different color, if you want when you hover on it to have a different color, that kind of thing, you just do it like that. But yeah, that's what we should see from this nav. Now aside. A site is basically side content. Something you want to put like like now we can see that all these things is a sidebar. So you see that in this W3 schools, they structure the website that the nav bar has the major, major links. Like if I click on CSS now to take me to the beginning of the CSS tutorial and everything. But the sidebar usually has the links that are like okay, I'm in HTML now. So some links I may want to locate within this HTML like you know area that kind of thing so i would just click on it and take me to some of those side things like that like if you go to twitter now the sidebar can be where you see profile home where you see um what you can say if, okay community settings logouts you get that kind of thing messages so all those kind of things like it should be there like at the sidebar so it's not even compulsory that you must have inside a number you can have either a number or sidebar you can have both just depending on how you want your website to like look and what the energy you want it to give then you just put it there but in this case now they put a sidebar so so in that case now if you want something like a sidebar you should try to put it in an aside aside semantic element then by telling you know that this is going to kind of be at the side so it's kind of playing its own role before you now finally style it again so an entire element defines some content aside from the content. It's just like a sidebar. Aside content should be indirectly related to the surrounding content. So let's see. Let's try this now and see how it's look. Hope we're all listening and getting something from this. So um, here they said my family and I visited the listen. So. They now put this at the side and let's see it with the styling so we can see this is another example mm -hmm, i was wondering so um mm -hmm. we can see that they talked like the documents had a head this is even a better way to structure this is html this is the head where you see the style and maybe ties one any other thing you want to put in the head then 
they now put a body the body is what that contains the major like obviously it's one that contains the major content of your website so they put my family and i blah 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 then you see an aside so this aside they wanted it to be at this side you get and they styled it that this content should be at the side so it's kind of telling html that this i'm trying to put is special i don't want it to just be i don't want it to just be the same way others are so it's going to be at the side when you start with css it's now also you know helping it and it's grouping it too so, so um then they now put small paragraphs and everything so you can see like all these things now i don't know like i don't think there's really much to really practice with this thing but it's just about putting what you want in in the particular semantic element and maybe add, adding some additional styling and then to work the place where you see the beauty of all the semantic elements is when you start styling you see how they style different elements and well like they put different um sections and everything into this html semantic elements and they style those semantic html semantic elements so it's kind of really bringing out the beauty to help your styling to be easier i guess because yeah so i think we've really touched the major ones any other one should just be like this um figure and figure and figure i think someone was talking about figure oh i don't know so talking about most people put out image in figure figure tag i don't know like i don't know if it's here but i remember someone asking that question so this figure tag is just basically containing some like illustration maybe diagram maybe if you want your website i think you want to write some blocks of code like in your website i want to show you just basically containing that thing you get like you want to show them something maybe like visuals yes so usually the figure tag will contain the visual and the fake caption the fake caption is maybe the caption you want to show under it yes. so as you can see all the things are useful to like tell HTML, tell HTML that this is what you are doing and it should kind of structure it for you so yeah you can see now they have a website where they are telling people places to visit and they put the places to visit and the paragraph and then they show the visuals you get or the illustration this is the image and then they put a fake caption so that person was asking you must you use figure tag you must not use figure if you don't use semantic HTML elements it's not like you know if someone will say ah you didn't use semantic HTML you have not started writing code no but it's just something like you should try to use this give your code more structure more professionalism more dimension like helping HTML to understand what you're doing helping your styling to be easier so in this case now person that put figure and fit caption like you see that okay it is one like if i want to style this whole thing now i want the image and fit caption to be um in i want to style this together i'll just put this in a figure tag and i style it or if i want that HTML should just know that okay this thing i'm about to put this like you get so it's not like if you don't use it you have not started life or you have not started programming it's just something to try to use like as much as you can even if you cannot use everything even if it's one or two you use like to help your website so you know, there's some additional things you get i don't know if somebody raised their hand i'm going to like take a break now and see if there are any questions but so that we can enter them before we enter html meta tags so like are there any questions or anything like that Are there any questions or like curious? I don't know. Let me check the chats. No one has texted. So someone raised their hand also like the person should ask ask the question. Yeah, um sorry, good evening. Please, I wanted to ask, you know, for the aside, the aside, um, the aside tag, you know, sometimes there's some websites you go to, you see this um, WhatsApp, Facebook page by the side. 
Like, is it how how did they do those ones? I don't get like you see advertisement or what, or you say WhatsApp Facebook. I don't get like it. Too much. No, like the images of WhatsApp and Facebook beside beside the beside the website. You know, like this are sidebar you're talking about. Where you write is when. Something about it. I said, there's a way that you go to, you see this WhatsApp image, like that look of us. Okay, you see it at the site as far well. you can click on it. Okay, is it like you see yeah. WhatsApp and is it like you tell you to chat or what? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, that's another that be like yes, you can yeah, chat yeah. with us here. Yeah. yeah, like. Yeah, it's just like you know, like the way WhatsApp in that WhatsApp logo now on the um, app, like the, the logo of the app mm. is always by the side of the page. Okay, I think what I'm so saying like, is that is it also that aside like you um, can click and chat with us if you have issues. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, those ones I think I've worked with like one or two websites that have that thing it's usually in the foot hour. okay but there's a way they style it down like it would okay, the, the way they style it depends okay. on how you want it actually because there's no manual like there's no manual. Like, okay if you don't use it in the foot hour, you have you have you have a bad distance but there's a way they put it down okay when you are scrolling it won't scroll so it will just okay. be there yes so all this is like this is CSS style and everything. Yes, 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 yes. Usually the footer, but someone can also decide to put it in the sidebar and then the way they will style it that you won't scroll. It's just about giving your code structure. So if someone's trying to find that thing, you will know exactly where it is. Not the one that you never even structure it anyhow and you just randomly put it like you get. So that's very, it's not like there's a manual or anything. Just make sure your code is readable and is optimized as best as possible. So yeah, I think we are putting okay. something somehow, I guess. So let me enter. Okay. I want to enter meta tags. Yeah, okay. So those are the like meta tags okay, are all just okay. to be well, Are you not on like can you use your now? Like meta tags are the things you see in your in your head, your head side of because normally you see, I told you HTML, they you see head and body. So, head contains meta tags, it contains the title, it contains if you that thing where we see internal CSS where they put like some stylings in the head. So, for the meta tags, help to be able to give your website like give the browser more information about your website. So, let me let me let me talk some more. Let's just like dive into it. But, I'll open it now and then share my screen. So, Okay, I'll share my screen now. If you guys can see, it's just tell me. If so, if you cannot see, it, tell me. So, um, I believe everyone should see it. So, yeah, I'll still explore more documentation because I feel like. The way I used to tell you guys about some ways where you can optimize your website and help you to have more SEO, more visibility on the internet. Because one thing that you should know is that even if you see you're a programmer, you have no business, like you only should do the website and go. If you finish doing the website and it's not even showing, like if someone Google it, you know there's some things you do, even if you Google the entire name, you will not see it. Google can be damning. 
you think okay google will just show once the person googles that thing they will just say no it's not you google something you will not see it you will type keywords you will not see your website on the web but when you give when you use the power that HTML has given you and you use it to your advantage Google will be able to show your website to people that like, okay, if I'm searching for something related, how do you think I'm searching for something related and the website shows? How do you think it's showing? If the um, programmer or the developer that did that website is, did not put some details or something so that if I'm searching my website, if my website matches with that thing, it's immediately show. So people will just do, they will not even like try to consider that thing. And then at the end, their website is not even getting attraction. It's not like getting any traffic, it's just there. One year will come and pass, the domain will expire, I'll be the host in the expire, they renew again. Nothing is moving. It's not good. If you are doing something, at least try to give some form of some form of edge over other websites so that your website can be able to go to its target audience. So um this meta tag now it just contains metadata. People don't really talk about the head part because they feel like uh it's for it to do the main set body now. What I give for the head part. But actually, the head part contains some things that we should kind of look at. Not even say everybody should fix all their eyes on it and everything, but you should look at it. In the head now, we can see meta card set. This card set UTF 8 is like it is a standard. It should supposed to be UTF 8 because if you most websites and most browsers, let me say most browsers use UTF-8. And if you're, this is in another language, let's say you wrote the content of your website in another language and your browser is supposed to translate it. If I'm, let's say, um, let me call example like right this now. Let's say, um, I don't want to use chemistry because not all of our science is Let's say we are all on level one. And in level one, there are different people that speak different languages. So if I said that, okay, I'm on level one and you're on level one, but there are different languages, I'll still be able to translate it because we're all on the same level. But if I'm on level one and you're on level two, we are not even on the same level and we're not speaking different languages. If I want to, if you want to translate, it will just scatter because you are not even on the same level, talkless of now translating. So you see, it is kind of giving a, like, a uniform basis so it should always be in utf8 saying that no matter what even if my website like browser has already set utf8 so they will be able to translate your system well and everything because that's like the encoding format you get just leave it as utf8 then the meta name description name description is just like what is this oh yeah what is your website even about you build the website finish you don't even tell um google because okay there are different layers to this website thing first of all you build a website and everything that you host it the hosting company has no they only just to host your this thing so that you host it you buy a domain name so that when someone searches that domain name they will see your website but your google search engine you never even work with it to be able to optimize your website html is the bridge between your website and google search and, and, and the search engine when it comes to visibility because if someone is searching for your for something related because obviously not everybody if i knew the website or let's maybe i have a particular direction i'm going for most times you just search for keywords just say okay well, how to brush your teeth you don't even know the website is going to show you how to brush your teeth but because the person with the best optimization the person really optimize their website they are Maybe 100 people said that teaching how to brush your teeth, but you see one on top, you now see the second one. It's not as if other ones are not valuable, but they do not know how to like really work with HTML to be able to make their website show on top. So, this meta name description, then meta, the name of this particular meta now is description, it's saying that describe your website, like describe what is even talking about, like okay. Well, and here, that kind of thing. If somebody, because the way Google works now, before I click on a website, I'll see kind of the description. I'll see, okay, well, uh, it's talking about free web tutorials, or I'm seeing something that is kind of relating to what I want. Fine, I'll click it. But you will not even give it any description or anything. You will just go, and then uh, your website should just be done. 
So you have to say description and then I would see some keywords. For even these keywords is important, but your description should also have some important things people want to search up because that description is what's going to help me to like click your website. Yeah, let me say I go to this thing now. I'm going to be, I want to search for something. What do I want to search for? I want to search for how to how to okay how to sing hey yeah, guys see that this person's website appeared first why they have better SEO they use HTML better and their description alone is telling me showing me something I want if your description is not even catchy how do you not want me to click your website to see what you're talking about? I'll just keep on going since we don't have what I want in the first place. Now you're saying how to sing better. This person's description has something that at least I'm saying, okay, well, anyone can learn how to scream. Eh, like, okay, okay, this is looking attractive. Let me click on it. You get it. so if you don't click on all this, if you don't put a good description, Google will not be able to even because if the description is basically as the name implies, describing your website. So if your your website is not if you don't put a good description or you don't even describe the website at all, eh, Google does not know what your website is about. So it's not even um, show it to people. So you have to make sure you, you use that as your advantage. And the keywords too is very important. Even if I have keyword, HTML. Like now, W C School now is talking about coding. So maybe the keyword will put programming, HTML. So if you are doing a website for buying shoes, put shoe, buy, e-commerce, sell, uh, what are that things, Seth? Purchase. Put types of shoe you have, Seth. So, like, someone is searching for those people, but there are some times now that even as a person, I want to search for something, but I don't want it to, like, I want Google to show me exactly what I want. So, even if it's not coming full English, and hey, maybe I want to say, um, play piano on F scale. Even if it's not like I just wanted to, I'm not writing full English for it. I just wanted to show me exactly what I want. Now, a website that has play, piano, skill, and maybe the website is talking about piano, the website has more edge over others. So it tries to like make use of that keyword system. So it's able to show you exactly what you want. Now, see, play, piano, on F skill. Now, this thing came up first because. YouTube was able to, the uh, this itself, they described their this thing well with YouTube. And apart from this videos part, if I want to look at websites, that well, talk about website now, you see that the keywords, the keywords had play and piano and the description too. Because they described their website well and they put at least the major things they're talking about, their description, all these things in bold, all these things in bold are matching. So Google will look at your description. Is it matching? Fine. Your the keywords too you put. Is it matching? Fine. So you guys, you have to make sure that you use all these things to your advantage. Then author. This author is just like okay, document share purposes. This is the person that created it. And viewport. When you're talking about um how you want it to look in viewport is just basically talking about um how it will look on phones like on different screens with different sizes and everything so that's how it is you look more on this view person when you're talking about css because css is after you finish designing how it will look maybe on the desktop because maybe if you're using your laptop code now you know how it look on the laptop now fine now you still have to design how it will look on the phone though. because you don't want you don't want to be that person that Build a website and then I go to your website and I, I'm some part is cutting out because you've never even optimized it well for the phone. And maybe I have to start clicking desktop site to see what you're even talking about. So you have to at least make sure at least you kind of shift the elements and everything so it can also fit into a phone screen size. So you look more on this viewport thing right from CSS. So as I said, meta tag, tag defines metadata about an HTML document. Metadata is a data is data about data. So you're just talking about metadata about other HTML documents. Like let me say 
the way we have our own bio data yeah like my name is this my red number is this my age is this my gender is this like that like that like that you can also use that kind of like thinking for html so the way we have our bio data that's where html has its metadata yes yeah, so it's basically for google to work with not really google but like whatever search engine you get for search engines it must not be google meta tag always go inside your head elements they always go inside the head elements and I typically use specified character sets, page description, keywords, auto of document, and all those things. Metadata will not be displayed on the page, but it's machine passable. Metadata is used by browsers, should I say browsers, search engines, and other web services. So it is, there are things that are used by browsers, search engines, it's just like the settings of that this thing, the bio data and everything. It's still important in as much as you are building something that is visibly attractive for users. You also have to build, you also have to make sure that you are build and um, you are optimizing it that in a way that it would even be shown to users easily. Self that the, the browser is understanding what your website is about the way you want to users understand it. You should also make sure that the browsers understand what your website is so that they will better know how to place your website so that you go to the target audience. Yes, so now uh, they now said there is a method to let web designers take control over the review codes through the meta tab. Yeah. Um, it also supports the global attributes. So here we can see keywords, just defining keywords for search engines, give a description of your web page, define the author, and here, here you can say, okay, I want my document to refresh every 30 seconds, maybe. It should be refreshing and it's just like giving the browser settings about your site and everything setting the viewport to make your website look good on all devices you guess setting the viewports the viewport is the user's visible area of a web page um you should include that the read device width part sets the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device so yeah, you can say, okay, well, I want the width the, to be the screen width of the device. Maybe there are some websites that maybe the width is actually smaller than the device, and maybe you see a space or a you know a gap between the website and the web. But most times, it's usually you want your website to occupy the total screen of the device. Now, obviously, initial scale equals one point zero part set initial zoom level. Uh -huh. Like how if I go to a website initially it is 1.0. But if I want maybe it to immediately it should zoom in first, it should be maybe more zoomed in as the person is loading. I can put it to 2.0 or 1.5 or however I want it. So yeah. And uh -huh. you can see something like this. So these are those ways you'll be able to optimize your site and make it better too. So I hope we have actually understood something somehow. What we have talked about, I know that this one was more theoretical, but we have to like come down to business. Like, yes, we have had a lot of fun. We have had fun with building things, but when you want to really want to face the reality, like you should be able to structure your code. You should be able to you to structure your code. You should be able to make sure browsers understand what you are doing able to make sure your site is visible you should be able to put users in mind very well like set it well use make use of meta tags don't just ignore that head part as far and nobody cares about it make use of it you get you should be able to use the power of html don't underestimate html use make sure you maximize well whatever stage you are in if you're in html say maximize it if you're in css maximize it if you're in JavaScript, maximize it. So at least your website can be very good. Even if your website is talking about how to sew, and your website is very good, whatever you're doing, do it well. You get. Whatever is worth doing, is worth doing well. That's one thing you should do. So don't be like, eh, it's just a website. Make sure at least it is good enough that people want to even go and visit it. You get. So, yeah. You guys should take note of all these things. Like if there are questions or anything, we can be taking them now. Then our assignment, I think I'm going to give you guys the assignment like now because I forgot to give you guys before. I don't know if we'll be like uh, -uh. 
I actually forgot. I'm sorry. Like, last week, I think I kind of did it for me. And I forgot. But I will kind of, I think overall, we should kind of, actually, someone that started from day one, we should kind of be able to build something at this age demo. Something. If you have practice and you understand something, you need to build something. And I give like an overall like project, like with HTML, where you use the tags and all those things. I will still look for like a good platform because some people are using mobile device and some people are using laptops. So I'll try to make sure it's balanced, balanced enough. You get so I'll look into that maybe by Monday evening latest you guys will get the assignment but it won't be that difficult or anything I'm not trying to stress anybody I'm just trying to make sure that at least we have an overall understanding so just putting these little, little concepts here and there and making us to apply them you get so it's very important when working with HTML, maximize everything whether it's the head section the body section semantic HTML tags even when we're talking about image and using the alt attributes, use all those things. Make sure your website is is good for the browser. It's good for the user. You get that's the thing. That's how you know that yes, you are proud of your work. Don't just do something because okay, you want to do it. Help help your website. Eh? Help it. You must not occupy space. There's lots of websites occupying space on the internet, and. Highest in one month, maybe they'll get like 10 clicks because they don't optimize it. If your website is going to be on the internet, at least make people be able to see it. You get so this is something you should look into. Does anyone have any question, contribution, anything to add? Um, I'll give us like okay. Someone asked that must we nest the heading section and footer tag inside the main body tag before coding? No, 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 that's the question. Okay, must we nest the heading section and footer tag inside the main body tag before coding, or can we just code directly inside the body? Oh, I'm saying like it's no if you don't use semantic HTML, I'm not saying that if you don't use it, you have no code something, no one take it away from you, but it's just something to give your code dimension. Give your code structure. Even when you are styling, I said you will thank me later. When you are signing, you are able to say, okay, header, HTML, you understand that this thing you are putting in the header. Because it is a HTML element. It's not like you invented it. So it, obviously, anything that is from HTML, it obviously has some functionalities, it has some features. Like when you put a tag now and HTML, know that that is a link. If you put header, it's somehow like, okay, this is header. Or, this is header part or footer. This is footer part too. So here's him already applying their own features attached to that element. And then when you start with CSS, to now really put it so that you're customizing it. So it's kind of giving your distance structure and everything and kind of grouping it. If you want to edit something, you know, okay, header part, okay, let me just go to the heading, maybe the section, this section, or this thing. Like it's helping your website to uh -huh, have structure. Not the one that. You put link somewhere, you put P, like it's not even if you come back, you might be confused, it might take you some time before. But if you have, if you structure it so and you're trying to edit something, just go straight to the place you want to edit and move. So it's not like it's very, very composable, but it's something we should look into. And in long, in the long run, self, whether I like it or not, you see yourself using it. Maybe doing a good project, the person you are working with is using it, so you have to use it too. Yeah, something we should just adapt to get so. Yeah, if there's any other thing, you can come to us and you learned a lot today. Thank you. Miss so I learned a lot though. <laughs> We're all learning. Don't be afraid to learn. Don't be afraid to practice. I feel like we should all kind of practice something. But Monday, shall we like to practice or not? By Monday, tomorrow evening, you will you will see what to practice with. So I'll just, you know, try to touch on, on different concepts and apply them somehow. It's not going to be that deep. And I'll make sure that at least both the people that are using phone and laptop, they will have a way to do it. Not like the one that I only looked at laptop. That wasn't inclusive at all. Sorry about that. I believe everyone should kind of understand something. I'm happy at this. This journey has been very beautiful because I, I'm not going to start the history it was too busy, but at least these three sections I've had was nice talking to you guys and everything. You guys will still see me, Sha, but maybe as assistant teacher, I'll just be in the background. If I talk, you hear me. If I don't talk, talk. But like, 
yeah it was really nice talking to you guys and trying to impact as little so that i know i'm sharing it so thank you everybody thank you for the wishes i miss you guys <laughs> so i'm saying that if i don't see you well don't worry you guys should pay attention because from now you know the what they say the, high, the higher it gets the higher you go, I'll be the harder I get. So, so but I'm not trying to scare anyone, but it might get a little bit more difficult. But don't give up. Don't be like, I don't want to do it again. You have already gone this far. You have already taken care of this time. So just push through. Like, it's what is in the end. Oh, yeah, but it's enough now. Huh? Oh, yes. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're happy. Well, yeah. You guys should just try to push through and everything. So it would. So it would be what is in the end. Because. Learning program is like climbing up a hill. There's a point where it's be like, oh, I can't do this, like, it's too much. But I promise you, once you're able to like cross that steepest part of the hill, it will be easier going forward. Like, you'll just be flowing with it. So, you guys should not give up on everything, just continue. So, thank you everybody for today. Even though I was not feeling that, I managed to come. So, you guys are doing well. So, I don't know, I think that is all for today, Sham. You guys will hear from me later, maybe tomorrow, about the assignments. Bye. I love you too. Bye. Okay, now. Take care.